So, what's up, people? Um, my name is Jin Si. I am from ThoughtWorks, a software developer from ThoughtWorks. And to be honest, it's kind of strange for me to be giving a talk at Ruby SG again because I honestly have not been touching Ruby in a while. Um, but this talk is really also not about Ruby. So anyway, the talk I'm going to give today is called Daring to Pair. And basically, if you haven't realized, it's a talk about pair programming. And I have basically been pair programming for about five months now, uh, working at ThoughtWorks. We kind of do it like as a daily practice. And like throughout this journey of learning how to pair, I've had some thoughts and about it and reflections about it that I really wanted to kind of put together and share with, with other people. So this talk is going to be about that. So I've been finding pairing, so my pairing journey so far, at the beginning, you know, it was kind of like frustrating, it was challenging. I wasn't used to it because I went from like being really unused to articulating my thoughts with someone staring at like someone sitting right next to me and coding like live coding right next to them to actually actually really appreciating the process and um, appreciating the the growth that it has it has given me right I went from being kind of frustrated sometimes at having to you know like keep along with my partner, having to explain things, to actually realizing and being kind of afraid even of asking my partner questions when I wasn't sure of how to proceed, to kind of realizing that um, pairing actually, like my partner's actually really there to help me grow as a developer, to help me solve problems along the way. And in many ways, um, pairing has really made the teams uh, that I, made me a better developer and the teams that I've worked with uh, better teams. So at the start, I started pairing when I went to ThoughtWorks University, which is our training program for uh, ThoughtWorks grads. And every day we have to pair on coding program, uh, coding assignments and dojos and projects. And you know, I'm, I'm very used to working solo and working independently and thinking my own head. So it was really quite a difference. But I start to realize that it's, it's not really about just you as an individual. It's really about um, you working in the team. And pairing really helped me develop those skills that is needed to work as a developer in a team. So honestly, I think that there's been tons of articles uh, out there and blog posts and talks about pair programming already that really go through some of the benefits and how it weighs up against like solo programming. And in fact, some uh, we actually have this really awesome like pair programming one one deck uh, within ThoughtWorks. But I will not have time to. Know, do justice to all of it, but I'll just like really gloss over some of the really important points, like how pairing actually helps to produce better quality code and saves time compared to traditional code review, or how it helps with keeping you focused on the task at hand and uh, being able to work through complex problems together with your partner. But what I want, really want to bring across is uh, one of the big realizations I've had about why pairing is so important, and so much of it I realize is really about teamwork and communication. So. Before I zoom out to the macro level of the team, I really want to go back to the skills that I mentioned before that pairing helped me as an individual improve upon. So the first is communication, you know, being, becoming a good explainer. You know, something that's super important as a consultant or like even as in, when you're in a lead role where you're going to have to exp like find yourself in situations where you have to explain a lot of things to technical decisions to non-technical people and you know, sooner or later. And if you're not even able to do that with a technical person that is your pairing partner, then that's going to be a problem. Secondly, realizing the importance, sorry, realizing the importance of uh, bringing my teammates along. So this is super, super important. And pairing was one of the things that made me realize how important this was. So when I wrestled with the impatience of working with a partner who was struggling uh, more with the code than I was, I realized I was faced with two choices. You know, I could you know, be a jerk with a big ego and just like, you know, blame my partner for slowing me down, or I could actually switch my mindset and try to gently guide my partner along and watch their contribution grow towards the team. So there's obviously one choice that's more productive than the other. Next, getting to know my teammates better. Actually, this is really important for just team camaraderie and just having a pleasant working environment in general. So you know the, those awkward moments when you're just sitting there watching your test run, waiting your build, for your build to finish? Those are the perfect moments for like, getting to know your colleague better. And you just like talk a lot of nonsense. And just for example, I was pairing with this guy in my my current project, and like he's just randomly started telling me about this half-naked gym he discovered near his neighborhood, and I was like, wow! And then we started watching people flip 
tires to work out and that kind of silly stuff. Like so, <laughs> really, it, pairing is work, but it's also for you to really have fun. It should really be a fun process. So let me ask you a question. Would all these things uh, actually matter if you were just working as a single dev on a project or maybe even just two devs on a project? Like probably really not that much, but a lot of times we actually have to work in a team. And when, once you're working on a team, I, real, I realize that these skills are really super important for you to have as an individual and pair programming really helps you to hone these skills. So zooming out from the individual level back to the macro level of the team, like pair programming really uh, does a lot to help in these three ways. The first uh, is knowledge sharing. So I can say from personal experience that this is a huge challenge when working in big teams because I work in a pretty big team right now. We have almost like 20 devs working on the same code base. And we've grown, we've increasingly faced problems as the team has grown. Like we're seeing people losing context about different parts of the code base and silos of knowledge developing around like one or two people. And none of this is good, but pair programming with disciplined pair rotations, that means switching up your pairs um, frequently, really helps to alleviate this. And of course, pair programming is not the only way to do knowledge sharing, right? Like you can have tech huddles, you can have code reviews, but I will say this, like as a truism almost, there is no better way to gain knowledge about the code base than actually writing that piece of code uh, by yourself. And that's what pairing with frequent pair rotations can give you. The second is collective code ownership. So going back to the problem of silos of um, knowledge developing around one or two people, like I said, this is not a good thing. You're going to meet some, a lot of problems with ego, where this one guy who's worked a lot on a single part of the code base is going to be very resistant to change from other people, and other people are going to be very afraid to suggest changes because they just don't understand that part of the code base enough. And like before you know it, that part of the code base is going to grow into, into a lot of complexity, and it's going to become like a, single, a potential single point of failure for the whole team. So this is actually like time for a really fun anecdote. Um, I had a business analyst. I had a business analyst on my team who used to work in a lot of like traditional, very waterfall enterprise kind of uh, environments, and he was telling me that there was one team that he worked on where there was this tech lead who was like the only one who knew anything about this very crucial part of the code base, and like one day that guy literally just disappeared, like he vanished, he ghosted, and he took his context with him, and they literally had to get a police search warrant to go to the guy's depart apartment and retrieve his laptop just so they could get the code for the team to continue working. So I mean, like, this is like a super extreme example, and probably most of us are not going to encounter this, but I think it's, it's really good to highlight the fact that uh, having a single person, on, only a single person knowing something about that part of the code base is really not a good idea. So finally, pair programming really helps with onboarding new team members. And I'm really, really uh, grateful for, for this because I felt like I was onboarded really smoothly into my project when I first joined. And it's really thanks to the patients of my teammates who paired with me at the beginning and the ease of knowledge transfer that happens when you do pair programming. And I was up to speed contributing effectively in no time and learning, gaining context about things really fast. And pair pairing helped immensely. I definitely couldn't have done it if we had not been pairing. Now, I've talked a lot about how pairing is beneficial, but like all things, it's just a tool, right? You can't just throw the same hammer at different, different objects. So there are cases where I would argue that maybe pairing is not that great an idea. So the first obvious one is when you have to do tedious road work, um, you know, surely it doesn't make sense to be pairing on fairly brainless tasks, right? And I would agree, but the caveat uh, stolen from Martin Fowler is that if you're doing road work, maybe there is some key abstraction somewhere that you're missing. And if you have a partner with you who can sit with you and look at the problem from a different perspective, maybe he can help you spot the missing abstraction. But you know, arguably, not all kinds of road work are like that. So arguably, a lot of UI work, uh, as long as you're sufficiently competent in it, you don't need a partner to, uh, to enable you, so to help you. So it involves a lot of repetition, unavoidable repetition, like you know, fiddling with padding and such. So in that case, I would say that it's really not necessary to pair. Now, the next case uh, when it may not be very beneficial to pair is when neither of the pair knows very much. So there might be a case where you're working on a stack that neither of you are very familiar with, in which case it makes sense to kind of split up and go and do your own spiking, your own research before, and, you know, Googling things, trying things out, learning as you go before kind of like coming back together to share your learnings. And so it's like, even though you're not actually pairing full time, you're kind of still loosely pairing 
it's in a way to keep each other un accountable. So I wouldn't really say that it's a case of don't pair at all, but rather you don't have to like, actively pair, share the same keyboard and the screen. So the final uh, case where I think pairing is not really ideal is when one of the pairs is too green and too fresh. So like when you have a really junior dev coming in, it can be hard for like the newbie, a newbie dev to gain a sense of independence and confidence when they're constantly pairing with a senior who may just be spoon feeding them or just like dominating the keyboard all the time. So in, that, in those cases where you have really junior devs, it may be beneficial for them to pair together to like bang their head against a problem before they start pairing with more experienced people. Now with that, I want to share some of the hard-earned lessons uh, I've learned throughout my pair programming journey. You know, some of you may think that this title looks a bit like I'm writing some kind of relationship guide, but actually, you know, <laughs> seriously, it is somewhat like that. Pair programming is a very intense and personal act of collaboration, and I don't think it's much of a surprise that some of the same uh, principles apply. So the first thing is um, be self-aware. Uh, like, you know, where do you usually trip up when you pair where do you, what are you not so good at? So it's a good idea to keep uh, a lookout for that, keep, that, keep a lookout for that and, work and like, consciously work on it. So ask your partner also to keep an eye out for things that you know that you're not very good at. For example, I tend to speak very softly and way too fast when I pair. So that's one thing I consciously, like, I, when I ask for feedback from people, I try to ask whether I've been doing well on that. Which brings me to the second point of asking for feedback. So you may be a self-aware person, but there will always be things that escape your own you know, notice. And the way to find out is to ask for feedback constantly. And for the things that you're consciously trying to work on, it's a good idea always to like, constantly ask for feedback on them to see how you're progressing on them. Third point is don't let your ego get in the way. Um, it's OK to look stupid, and it's, there's, there's no need to show off. So you know, if I compare um, how I onboard onto my current project with how like, my, my attitude was as an intern, as a, I think there's a lot of difference. Because when I got into this project, I was really quite I was not, I was definitely nervous, but I was not very afraid of looking stupid. Like I, was fine, I was totally okay with asking a lot of questions to figure out more um, and to improve my understanding and knowledge of the project. Whereas when I was an intern, I kind of was like, oh, I don't want to bug my supervisor with his real, like, I don't want to disturb my supervisor who's doing real work. I should like, try to figure out everything on my own. So I ended up doing a lot of independent work, and my supervisor was like, oh my god, you did so much work, yay, I'm so happy. But I realized that. I could have learned much more if I had been more open to asking questions and learning from seniors, which, I am, uh, which I'm learning a lot from right now in my current project. And the, the, the reason that pair programming really helps with this is that the dynamic that pair programming introduces really lowers that barrier of fear and uncertainty that a newcomer always experiences. Because existing devs are already so used to explaining themselves over and over again that they're not, you know, they don't see it as extra burden when someone new comes on board and they have to explain things again. It becomes like, kind of like second nature. And so if you're the person in the pair who is like less familiar with a piece of code or less experienced, I think you should not be afraid to ask questions. The devs, if you're working in a good team where pairing is a, a constant practice, the devs you pair with should be more than happy to help to explain. And you know, conversely, if you're the person on the pair who's at the advantage, so to speak, you know, there's no need to show off. You know, I, one thing I really look up to in the seniors in my team is, firstly, obviously, they have good technical chops. Secondly, is that they're good teachers. Finally, uh, be, hum be humble. This goes back again to being self-aware. You know, they're tied to each other, right? So there's always something to learn, whether you are the one learning things directly from your partner or whether you're learning through teaching your partner. So as I've grown in my humility, I, I've grown in my confidence as a developer as well. They go together. Next is be flexible. So whoever you're working, whenever you're working with someone uh, other than yourself, you have to learn to make compromises. I'm sure we all know that. So when I was in ThoughtWorks University, uh, we were working in Java with an IntelliJ IDE, and different people had like different key maps. So like when you pair with a different person, you're like, oh my god, I have to learn this other key map. And then in the end, I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna learn everything, because it's it's like you have you have to be flexible. Like, you can't just say I'm not gonna pair with this person just because he uses Control R and I, I'm familiar with Command R or something like that, right? And even when I came to this project I'm on right now, we most of the people were using like Visual Studio Code, so I was like, okay. I have to install another text editor, like, why not? Right? So, you know, big deal, I just had to pick both of them up. And the last time I gave this talk, so I gave this talk at Junior Dev before, SG before, the last time I gave this talk, I said that I have never paired with someone who uses Vim until now. Uh, that has changed in my past pair for the past two weeks, also uses Vim. So this is the first time I'm actually able to pair with someone who uses Vim. But, you know, before that, it's like... 
if I had to pair with someone who doesn't use Vim, I would just be like, yeah, sure, I just forgo Vim. I, if they're pairing with me, I'll just toggle Vim mode off. If I'm pairing with them, I'll just like, yeah, whatever, I'll just not use it. So every, everyone has their own like, you know, comfortable zone, right? The tools that they like to work with. But if you can learn to be flexible and not grumble about why your partner doesn't use XXX tooling or XXX, you know, fancy um, text editor, right? I think <laughs> you will be a better person and dev for it. <laughs> okay, finally, you are responsible for making the pairing session effective for yourself. So put in another way, you're responsible for being engaged and for working with your pair in a mature manner. Like for example, if like sometimes when in TW, I kind of felt impatient quite easily sometimes because I thought my partner was not getting things quickly enough and I would get frustrated. But I realized that it's not productive to just constantly feel frustrated and like feel like, oh, my partner is slowing me down because what are you going to gain out of that? So you have to make, you really have to make that mindset switch to say, I'm here to, if I'm, I'm the person who has an advantage, I'm here to enable my partner. And conversely, if you're the person who is maybe not like slower or struggling with the code, you should speak up. You should tell your partner that, hey, like, could you explain this line to me? I don't really get it. If not, your partner wouldn't know. Like, so I've been in situations also where I've been pairing this guy for the whole day. And then and I'm like, at the end of it, I'm like, so how was it? And then he's like, I didn't like pairing with you. And I'm like, oh my god, why? Ah. <laughs> and I'm like, you didn't say anything for the whole day. And then you tell me at the end of the day, you don't like pairing with me. So he's like, I told him, like, you know, the next time, if there's something, sound it out. Like, because he's, his complaint was I, he didn't understand a lot of what was going on. And I was like, if you didn't understand, please, you know, please sound it out while you're pairing, not at the end of the pairing session. So whether on whichever side you're on, it's really up to you to make the pairing session effective for yourself. OK, so I've spent uh, enough time talking about the benefits of pairing and my own personal challenges and reflections about it. So at this point, if you haven't done uh, pairing before, you're probably wondering, like, oh my god, show me how to do it. So with that, I am going to do a quick demo with my colleague, Denise has kindly agreed to help out uh, with me today. And the last time I did this demo, uh, the code was in JavaScript, but I, I'm obligated to do it in Ruby this time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope I have that. Thank you. I think it's over there already. I'm going to mirror the display. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> okay, so the, the, the demo is going to start with pairing NT patterns for some, you know, fun and laughter. So Denise is, has kindly volunteered to be the, the asshole pair. <laughs> All right, so the, the, this, this task that we're going to do is to implement a, a calculator in Ruby. Hey, look at this cat. It's really cute. I, I haven't, like, I'm still explaining what the task is about. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, then it's like, I think the point of this task is to uh, implement a calculator in Ruby. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do is write a sum method. So, it's going to, like, take an array of, of items and, you know, uh, numbers and try to sum it up. Oh my and gosh, wait, 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 I have a phone call. Wait, wait, hang on. Very important. My sister needs to buy some clothes from this drop shop. Hang on. Okay. Uh... Yeah, so like I was saying, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. um, we, I'm going to try to write this method to take the sum of an array of numbers. Ah, okay. So let's try to do some TDD over here. Oh, okay. So I'm going to write my first test. Okay. Um, so if you just, if the sum of... Th okay, so that was, <laughs> that's the first pairing anti-pattern, uh, the partner who really is not paying attention to you at all. Or the partner is constantly checking their phone while you try to pair with them. So uh, really, like, if you're pairing with someone, try not to try not to have your attention drift to something else. It's kind of annoying for your partner. Uh, be the dominating one. Sorry. Delete passive aggressive. Delete my quote. Okay. So the next anti-pattern demo. So I'm gonna write this. I'm gonna write this. Um, I'm gonna write this test to test. Uh, what my method should return if, what do you think? If I get an uh, empty array? Yeah, sure, why not? So what do you think? I think the sum of an empty array, 
I think if the array is empty, we actually shouldn't return, we should like return nil, because there are no numbers to sum, technically. Yeah, okay, why not? Hey, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 I don't think we should do this. I think we should do something else. <laughs> Instead of returning now, maybe, um, since we know the process of TED, maybe we can jump ahead. Instead of returning now, let's just uh, do a sum normally. Okay? Um, I think we should be checking the. Wait, hold on, no, 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 no. I, I know how to do this. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. This is wrong, okay? Why, why, why is it wrong? <laughs> Tell me. Like, dude, you obviously supposed to test your edge cases before you write the. But that's your opinion. No, baby steps, man. TDD, come on. Okay, fine. Okay, so <laughs> the second anti pattern is um like being. Aggressive, passive aggressive, or outright aggressive with your partner. So, like, when you have disagreements with your partner, like, don't go and delete their code after they've written it, or like, dominate the keyboard and snatch the keyboard from them. So, <laughs> I think uh, we're gonna do a proper one this time. Sure. So, uh, we there's one uh, programming technique that we do called driver navigator, which involves mainly the person at the keyboard basically driving meaning he's the one typing, he or she is the one typing the code. The navigator is kind of the person sitting behind, giving comments, thinking about the code at a higher level. So we're going to try a driver navigator first. Okay, so I think for the first test case, maybe we should start with the simplest uh, empty array, let it return now. So, I'm going to expect method. <laughs> Do you want to add in a default block? <laughs> yes, that would be a uh, that would be good. Oh, sorry, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yep, this is how test. long it's been since I got JavaScript, right? So, yeah, so. Do the implementation for this to make this test pass. Well, right now it's test. actually passing <laughs> because true. it differs nil by default. So, maybe I'll write another test for. Make it return zero. When I have maybe only one uh, number in the array. Okay, that's fine. Let's say. For some reason, it's still passing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I feel like I should have stuck with JavaScript now. <laughs> <laughs> Can the master in the front yeah. seat? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I save my calculator? Amazing. Master um. knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yep. let's write the implementation for the sum. So I'm going to write the stupidest thing, which is the return one. 
but my first test failed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something proper now. Fix the test. Fix that. Yeah, so the first test passed because I'm I was returning one uh, directly. So now I'm just going to be lazy and jump to the... Oh, sorry. Yay, my test passed. <laughs> Properly now. Okay, so that's kind of like the first style of uh, pairing that... This is, mainly, this is mainly the style that I've been doing most of the time. Another one that we kind of taught in TW is ping pong. Uh, that one's really done when you do TDD. But then again, doing TDD in a disciplined fashion is also kind of difficult. So I don't do it so often, but I can just demo it. So the idea of ping pong is that uh, you, just, you write a failing, a failing test, you run a test, see them fail, and then you pass it on to your partner to, write the, to make the test pass. So right now I'll just go ahead and implement a new test case. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Vim. <laughs> sorry, I'm doing Java. <laughs> Actually, it's going to pass already, but... Yeah, that's right. And implement another another method. Okay. Yep. So this one, I kind of, I kind of was lazy and jumped ahead <laughs> straight away. So I'll I'll implement a fielding test for a different uh, method now. Maybe average. So I'm just gonna be lazy and, and do a straight do a a direct kind of not not test for any edge cases, so do a very straightforward one. Uh, uh, yeah, I did I said that. Yeah. Yep, so I'm gonna write I'm writing the test, the filling test now. Yep, so, so now that I've written the filling test, Denise is going to implement the method and make it pass. So, because it's TDD style, so I'm just going to write the minimum code to make it pass. Which is 0.5. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. That's right, my linter is very angry. Now I write the test case. Oh. Uh, and yeah, there. This one. This no, no, one. it's done. It's done. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We wrote the block in the wrong block. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so. You get the idea. It's like write the filling, write the test, watch it fill, write the implementation, watch it pass. Obviously, this is a very stupid implementation, but <laughs> you'll get there, TDD, one step at a time. And with that, that's about all for my talk. Thank you very much. Do I